My name is Andrew M. Stroth. I'm a civil rights attorney and the managing director of Action Injury Law Group. It's a national civil rights firm headquartered in Chicago. We're here today with the family of Isaac Goodlow. The family is here, close friends are here, and we want to start by sharing a little bit about who Isaac was. Isaac, as most of you know by now, was 30 years old. This young man, based on my conversations with the family, overcame significant health challenges and meningitis as a youth. Later, he suffered from bipolar disorder and managed that. Isaac Goodlow was able to, able to overcome these challenges and live his life. Last night when I was with the family, they shared with me who he was. And they shared his, they affectionately called him Nunu. They called him Noodles. They called him Gucci Iceman. His family said he was a low-key, mild manner, made friends, talked to everybody. This family truthfully describes Isaac as an old soul. We talked about what music Isaac listened to. And he said the Isley Brothers, Marvin Gaye, the OJs. That's old school. Isaac Goodlow enjoyed playing cards. Isaac Goodlow enjoyed playing video games. Isaac enjoyed barbecuing chicken and fish with his family. His sister shared with me, his two, sis, two of his sisters shared with me yesterday, his favorite was mac and cheese. Isaac also loved animals. His favorite pet was a dog named Pepper. What's so tragic is right behind us in this building, Isaac Goodlow, a 30-year-old black man, was shot and unjustifiably killed by the Carroll Stream police officers. That's what we know. Early the morning of January 3rd, the Carroll Stream police officers came here. I'm sorry. On February 3rd, early that morning, the police came and unjustifiably shot and killed Isaac in the building right behind us. What we know is that within moments of the officers entering the sanctity of his home, they shot and killed him. Here's also what we know and the narrative given by the Carroll Stream police chief. We know Isaac Goodlow was unarmed. Black man unarmed shot in the sanctity of his own home. What we also believe is that Isaac was suffering some form of mental health crisis. What he was calling for was help, not to be shot by the police. And what we know is that in spite of Isaac's mild manner, demeanor, and low-key personality, this bright light was extinguished by officers, two officers, working for the Carroll Stream Police Department. Here's what's most important, what we don't know. The city of Carroll Stream has not released the video. We haven't seen the video. We haven't heard the audio. We have not seen the police report. We don't know the names of the officer that killed their son and their brother. Today, what's the family demanding? The family is demanding answers. The family is asking Mayor Frank Severino. The, May the family is asking Chief Police Donald Cummings. The family is asking the DePage Public Integrity Unit to release the video, not publicly, but at least to the family so they can see the last moments of his life. This family wants to make sure that what happened to Isaac doesn't happen to anyone else. Yet another unarmed black man shot and killed by the police. 30 year old Isaac Goodlow should be with us today. Instead of him being with us today, this family is planning a funeral. That's not right. Now a couple members of the family are gonna, gonna speak to you. Again, my name, Andrew Stroth, S-T-R-O-T-H. And next we'll have a couple of the family members speak. They'll tell you their names and a little bit about Isaac. Hi, my name is uh, Key 
Kiana Nakaniko, K Y E N N A, last name Nakaniko, M C C O N I C O, and I am Isaac's big sister. Isaac was a great brother. Isaac loved my kids. He loved all our kids, me and my sister kids. And he just was a great person. He was always around helping when I needed him. Isaac loved to watch movies and playing cards with us. He was family oriented. Most of the time, just with, around us, they didn't sell. What he just got from these people, he did not deserve. And we want justice for our brother. He did not deserve that. He was a great man. He did not deserve that at all. We just want justice for our brother. We want to know what happened. to nobody. He never went out his way to do any of that. If he was chilling in his house, that's what he was doing. If he wasn't in his home, he was chilling with me and my mom. Just doing regular things as a family. Playing cards, having long talks, listening to music, playing a video game with me, giving me advice, telling me to keep my head up and stay strong and follow my goals. My brother never harmed anybody. He never went out his way to cause no kind of harm towards nobody. That's not the kind of person he was. He was very loved. Every time he came around, he always kept the room uplifted. He kept a big smile on his face. He always knew how to pick somebody's head up, even when he was feeling bad. Me and my brother did everything together. We were so close. We done been through a lot of stuff together and overcame a lot of stuff together. He made it out of a lot of situations. My brother was definitely. the relationship we had with our mom, they would be real close. They was very close. They talked about everything. No matter how long it took, he always gave my mom the time that she needed to talk to her. He was real close to her. He wasn't this kind of person to just cause any kind of destruction towards anybody, intimidate anybody, to go out his way to cause any kind of harm towards anybody. He never was the initiator of none of that type of stuff. He stayed to himself. He stayed at his home where he felt he was safe at, where he felt he was supposed to be comfortable. My brother did not think he was going to lose his life inside his home. More justice for our brother. He didn't deserve to leave like this. He did not deserve to be taken away from us like this at all. Whatever they got, but he was an amazing man. 
he has issues. And I need people to stop having the fact that if something is not wrong, what happened to Mr. Bill? Yeah. This is up. Uh, in his bunny bedroom, I was with my son. They shot my son down like a dog. They shot him down like a dog. Like he wasn't even a human being. Isaac was a good man. We was real close. We was real close. He won't harm a fly. He won't harm nobody. His nieces and nephews, they all love him. They shot my baby down like a dog. I want justice. I want justice for my son. He didn't deserve to die like this. We know. Oh God, please, please. He didn't deserve to die like this. My name is Junior Reynolds, and I ain't the same Reynolds R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S. Isaac was my cousin, more like a brother, because that's how we grew up together, how we were raised. Um, he was very family oriented. He was my favorite cousin. We loved playing cards, watching movies, just playing games. He was just had a bubbly personality, always had a smile on his face. And we just want justice for him because we just need justice and we want answers. Okay, we're going to have one final speaker, patriarch of the family, um, Henry Pickle. Uh, Henry Hebrew. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I think, I really think the family has said a lot. I think it, it's, it's, to be honest with you, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of hard for anybody. We, we got, we're living in a time where, we're living in a time where the black man and the young black men are being, uh, they're not understood. And we still got, we, we still got a group of people who don't understand that we got we got a plenty, millions of good black young men, and we don't have to be, and we shouldn't be feared by other people and other races. I think that Isaac represents millions of black men out there who are wonderful, who are good. Sure, they have, there are some problems because of where we come from. But for the most part, we're living in a time where all young men, no matter what color they are, should be looked up and have the same, they should have the same opportunity of other young men. I really don't believe, and I don't like to interject race in here, but I must tell you, I do not believe that if this was a, if this was a young white boy, young white man, that this would have happened. Because they're not lying. He had some problems. But I must tell you, and I'm telling you from experiencing what I know, he was a good young man. If the police had said, introduced themselves and said they was the police, this kid would have obliged to it. Believe me when I tell you this. And he represents a many young black men that are good. We must stop this. This shouldn't have happened like this. If there was a problem, and we'll find out what that is. But if there was a problem, they should have addressed this and handled this properly. They shouldn't have just came in and shot this man, this young man like this. They shouldn't have done that. Now let me just tell you guys, life has taken away. This is a young man who, he had just signed a record deal. And he was going on to, he was going to record an album. And for several years, he's been asking me, to put a record out, put this record out. And I decided that I would, you know, that we would complete the record 
sometime this year. But let me show you how good Isaac was. He did not want to put out anything. He didn't just want to put out any rap, even though he loved everything. But he wanted to put out the good in rap. He wanted to put out the good. And this is what happened. Now his life is taken away. And he cannot fulfill the dream that he had in him. It is a sad day. It's really sad. But I want everybody to know, Isaac represents a million young black men that are okay and good. Sure, they have some issues. But in the end of the day, we got to do better. We got to do better because we shouldn't be standing here. We shouldn't be standing here for this. We really shouldn't. The kid was actually really a humble kid. He went home a fly, really, don't, don't get me wrong. There are some things that you guys gonna see out there that you guys gonna probably say he was, was he? Well, like I just told you, like any other kid, he had some issues. But here's the thing, this family is telling the truth. This kid was a humble kid and he would not do anything against a police officer command. He's not that kind of kid. He's not. And this shouldn't have happened. Thank you, guys. Say his name. So, one, one thing. Say I'll... his name. Isaac. Say 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 his name. Isaac. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! So, one thing I'll tell you, this morning, this letter was sent to the mayor of the village of Carroll Stream and the chief of police. It's a letter from the family. Um, I can email it or you can, we can circulate it. In addition, earlier this morning, we sent out an official preservation letter of all the audio and video that we're demanding. So this is real simple. We're asking to see the video. We're asking to see the objective evidence. And, and we appreciate you all coming here today. We're not going to take any questions. We'll have a lot more answers once we see the objective evidence.